Hello everyone. So a quick little bit of business here. Um, so normally this week we'd be doing an episode of breaking down the Nightfall Saga. Um, long story short, this spot we're in in the Nightfall Saga is a little weird when it comes to what issues and where we're coming into a couple new store, couple mini story arcs within the main Nightfall proper. I'm kind of trying to figure out where the breaking demarcation point is because we have the start of the plot arc with um, Joker and Scarecrow kidnapping uh, the Mayor Kroll coming up, and we also have uh, the there's a story arc involving Firefly coming up, and so I'm trying to kind of figure out the right demarcation points for this. Doing video coverage of this as opposed to just issue by issue blog recaps has definitely given me a new sense of perspective as to what goes into Jay and Miles explaining the X-Men and breaking down story arcs for bigger events like Inferno, for example. Uh, yeah, particularly Inferno, more so than, say, Mutant Massacre or, or Fall of the Mutants. Um, yeah, Fall of the Mutants is also probably a good example here. In terms of how those break down. Actually, no Inferno. Inferno is the right term for this one because of how the weird way things interact there, particularly related to Liana and several other things. So yeah, Inferno is now they think about it the right comparison. So we have in so like it's definitely give you a context for that, because like, okay, I need Nightfall because it is bouncing back and forth between at this point. Um, Batman and Detective Comics with different writing and to a certain degree editorial. No, not editorial. It's all the same editorial team, but different writing teams. Things get a little weird. And so it's tricky to find out, okay, like the first three issues, that's a pretty consistent. It sets up a, a status quo kind of thing. But then as we get into, okay, now we have these two mini arcs going on. Where's the point where I do a cutoff? Okay, so now we're doing this, this chunk of mini arc. So... Showing a bit how the sausage gets made for something like this. I imagine Linkara is going through a similar, goes through similar things on his end. Though I'll also notice like he undoubtedly has very deliberately has spread out his coverage of the clone saga over a very long time, as opposed to doing a dedicated, um, atop the fourth wall presents the clone saga kind of thing. So uh, Maybe he he's done the right thing by stretching it out this lot that long. In any case, um, so there's that. The other thing I want to talk about here is Cyberpunk 2077. I have purchased the game, have I, and I have been playing it. I did, and I did leading up to this, a whole bunch of reviews and streams and other stuff, kind of gearing up towards this release of playing through the Shadowrun trilogy of Shadowrun Returns, Shadowrun Dragonfall, and Shadowrun Hong Kong to kind of lead up to this as the previous adaptation of a tabletop cyberpunk role-playing game to modern systems, in this case, PCs, not uh, PC. And I've purchased my copy, I, I actually pre-ordered my copy of Cyberpunk 2077, um, and I've been playing it now for about 50-something, 60-something hours. I haven't beaten it yet. I am going to beat it, uh, and I'm definitely going to review it, but I thought of, okay, do I want to do a let's play of this? And what form is that going to take? And I've, because I, I feel a lot about, without giving away the review when that comes out, I feel a lot about Cyberpunk 2077 the way I feel about Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect Andromeda is a flawed but enjoyable game. And Cyberpunk 2077 is similar in a lot of respects. And there's a lot of talk about it that's similar to, say, City Project Red's previous game, The Witcher 3, which I've been, I've been playing off and on before uh, 2077 came out. And so here's the long and short of it. I will be doing a video review of Cyberpunk 2077 once I have beaten it. This will be the PC version. Um, my, con my PC, the version I'll be playing on, is not going to be on maximum most pretty specs. I'm using, my computer has like a uh, Intel i5 um, processor with a Katie Lake core, and I've got a 1660 Ti, a GTX 1660 Ti, so 
I'm kind of in a nice in, in a spot where it's like not doesn't run perfect, but it runs okay, and it like runs all right. It doesn't have some of the same graphical problems that like it it runs better than on a 1070 or uh, 1080 or that's or at least a 1070, but not as well on uh, on like your on your 2070s. And I certainly can't do ray tracing, so it's a, a decent. I think it's a decent spot graphically to be talking about the game. However, from a review from a let's play standpoint, I was initially held off on doing a let's play because I was waiting for. Because we, we'd had the initial issues with the game's release of the brain dance sequences causing, um, causing seizures and that sort of thing, and I thought about and I basically held off because of that fact. Um, and after playing the game for a while, I was like the conclusion that one hand I'm enjoying the game. There's enough stuff that I have not done in the game that I missed and would have to, in order to do them, would take a second playthrough, and enough ways where. Like, dialogue scenes can articulate in slightly different directions if you, depending on your backstory. Um, like, I, my, my V is a nomad, and I could see ways in where these dialogue sequences could articulate differently if you were a street kid or a corpo, where I could see wanting to do a second playthrough of this game in the future. It would be a reasonable time to do the Let's Play. How, um, however, there is a, there's an art design thing about the game that is, and graphical issue, few graphical issue things about the game that make things tricky for doing a let's play. And long story short, there's a lot of nudity in this game, and like not uh, some of it is intentional. It's advertising. It's using. It's the advertising in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, using sexualization and sexual imagery of both men and women. Or let's say not just women, but also men as well, as objectified objects to depict the object the commodification of humanity in a cyber, in a cyberpunk dystopia, in a in a corpo corp, corp, corpocracy, I guess would be the correct terminology, and that is clearly a deliberate choice. It is like it is deliberately meant by the people doing art design for the purposes of commentary, and I get that, I understand that, and. It makes sense within the context of the world, but it makes things weird when it comes some of the decisions they've made when it comes to YouTube's policies involving what you can and can't show in games in terms of nudity and that sort of stuff. The other part that's related to this also is, um, long story short, with, with there is a little graphical glitch things that happens when you when you change your V's clothing, particularly upper body clothing, um, where it will complete, where even though with the upper layer, clothing layer, it will completely refresh the clothing layers from the lowest to the highest. Um, which means that you're running into, um, that all of a sudden you're just getting just flashes of nudity on screen if you have a female V, which is who my, who my V is at this point. Um, and that makes things weird in terms of, again, from the YouTube standpoint, like I'm not, I'm not a prude. If you read my blog, you know, I've reviewed a fair amount of risque anime over time. I haven't reviewed any like straight up porn, but I've reviewed some stuff that's like tap dance right towards the line and have not been hostile towards it because of that, for those reasons, uh, because they've been risque. Um, so it's not that I object to nudity or sexual content in my video games. Nudity and sexuality is a part of humanity, of, of life. It's a thing. People do it. It's okay. It, it's just one of the things where like, or to put this another way, if we had more NC-17, if the thing that was more likely to get you an NC-17 rating was because somebody got brutally disemboweled in a film, as opposed to somebody having a sex scene, I would be perfectly fine with that. Um, 
Sex is a thing people do on a regular basis. Again, it's a healthy part of life. Murdering people or killing people in bloody, gruesome fashions, a little less so. But that doesn't that doesn't mean I don't like horror either. Um, so, or I don't like my violent anime or anything like that, or fantasy films or whatever. I, it's not that I don't like that either. So, it, it's again it's a case where like I'm running into. Like, all things being equal, if the if the perspective of YouTube was rating was okay, it or Twitch or more so YouTube, if YouTube's perspective on this was oh it's yeah there's nudity here, oh it's it's fl these advertisements have bare breasts or dicks or what have you all over the place, or whenever you change V's top you just uh, or bottom. You get a flash of their of their boobs or lower genitals. Um, I haven't played a male V. I don't know if every time you change V's trousers, you get a flash of dick. I don't know. But assuming that it does that too, and it's equal opportunity in that particular weird way the graphics are working, um, I would be like, I wouldn't object with object to streaming that, provided that YouTube that I wouldn't have to worry. That I would get in trouble with YouTube and get in terms of my channel going down. Um, I'm not monetized. I'm not worried about my videos getting demonetized because of violence in a, in a work or nudity in a work, but I don't want my channel to go down because game develop, because of how they handle, like how a game developer handles their graphic engine with regard to nudity. That's the long and short of it. So. But I do want to do a let's play of this game because there are things to talk about in the story from a narrative standpoint, kind of at a crest by quest or story arc by story arc level. So how? So I'm still going to talk about it. I'm still going to do a, a let's play of it, but I'm going to do it differently. If you're reading my blog, you'll know that I have been doing off and on a let's play, a written let's play series for the gold box games, mainly focusing right now on like the first on, on the pool of radiance series. They're poor radiance. I'm doing curse of the Azure bonds right now. It's, it's gets in hiatuses off and on based on what's going on with my computer stuff, what's going on with what games I'm playing and that sort of thing. Um, but, and the way I've been doing that is doing breakdowns by a like, quest area by quest area in that game. Cause that's how that game, those games are structured. I'll probably would want to do something like that for Cyberpunk 2077, because I think that would work better from a narrative stand, not dirty narrative standpoint. And by narrative, I mean for a blog post of, with, of talking about quests as they come up, um, on a second playthrough when they, um, on, and when there's something to talk about on a thing by thing basis. I want to actually beat the game first before I do this under those circumstances, because once, because I'm, I'm kind of, I may end up unintentionally 100%ing this, and if I do do that, I want to know how that articul, how the difference is between uh, character backstories or life paths articulate. I'd like to know, okay, this one played this way as a nomad, how does it different when I'm playing it as a street kid? Um, where do different dialogue options come up? Similarly, um, the other thing I want to do about this, like, if I'm going to, like, when I do this, since I'm doing it in writing, this also gives me the opportunity when it comes to, for example, discussing the backstory of Johnny Silverhand and the stuff that happened in 2022. This also gives me the opportunity to dig into how that's portrayed in the tabletop game, because, like, part of what Cyberpunk 2077, but drew me to it, is this is an adaptation of a tabletop game that I'm not familiar with, but have an interest in and have had ambient discussions in the background for the longest time, for as long as I've been interested in tabletop role-playing games, meaning since I've been in middle school, I've been seeing alongside discussion of Shadowrun, which is the first Cyberpunk tabletop game I played, also seeing discussion of our Tales Orion Cyberpunk game. But, and one of the things I was looking forward to for this game was, okay, this is, is this going to hook me into the world? Is this going to get me interested in that part of the setting? Spoilers for whenever that review, my review comes up. In that respect, it has succeeded. 
And I have purchased in the past the bundles of holding that were put out by um, the bundle of, um, of holding uh, for the various Artelzorian cyberpunk game lines. Not third edition. Um, they haven't had that one available in that regard, but I've had Cyberpunk 2020 and Cyber Generation. I've had the books for those. I've purchased the books for those lines. So I am very interested. And so when I do this Let's Play, because some of the material from a couple earlier adventures, both the Firestorm uh, adventures, which wrapped up the 2020 portion of the game line, and the and both the Never Fade Away short fiction and the adventure from, I believe, an earlier source book also come up. I'd like to discuss those, like, in the context of those portions of the game, on top of general world building and that sort of thing. And so that's, that is something that will work better in, I believe, in a prose medium than in video. So, what does this mean for your, if you're, if you're just watching my YouTube channel? Well, then go to CountZeroOR.com, which is my blog, and click the follow button there and the email notification links and all of that to be let know when new blog posts go up, uh, is the short version. Because when that starts, again, those posts are going to be there. And how it's going to break down from a granular level is not going to work as well for video. I might even try doing this like podcast versions of those for people who prefer, who are more auditory. Uh, but I don't know how well that will work for a series of video essays. We'll see how things go then. I don't think it'll work that as well for that regard. Considering like some of these quests, there's a lot, there's a lot I can talk about them, a lot of things I can say about them, but they may also be like five minutes to 10 minutes long, but have 15 minutes or 20 minutes of things to talk about, that sort of thing. We will cross that bridge when we come to it, but that's that business out of the way. So that is the current plans for Cyberpunk 2077 and why we've had a slight delay in the Nightfall videos. We should be on schedule for Nintendo Power Retrospectives for this month. That will be up hopefully next week. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and in future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.